Today we're looking at yet another bullet, this time the CBJ cartridge for 300 blackout. The MCX is the only weapon chambered for this ammunition, so it begs the question whether it's made good with this addition. I've wanted the MCX to be decent for so long, but it always seems to end up falling short in one category or another, and ammunition was certainly one of these issues. The best cartridge, 300 blackout AP, is very very good, but previously it was craft only, and now it's finding raid exclusive, and the next ammo down from it was M62, which is not to be confused with the M62 of 762. NATO. This left the MCX in a similar spot to the mid-game AKMs of the past, with a large jump from the second place ammo to the best one, although funnily enough the AK issue was resolved as well, but that one's for another video. So enter CBJ. This one comes in at Skier 3, costing 414 rubles a bullet, which is pretty cheap, and it has some bumper stats too. Comparing it to 556, which is probably the most similar weapons platform, it is technically better than M855A1, which is now available itself at around the same time on Peacekeeper 3. CBJ's 58 damage is nearly 20% more than 55A1's 49, which is even more important now because of the way that damage spills over through black limbs. You want as much damage as you can get given that arms only pass through 49%. Increased damage also helps with AI, from scavs to raiders and boss guards because of their high HP pools. It's worth remembering that raiders have 752 HP, which is significantly more than regular players, and even scavs have a second harder version sometimes with 540 HP total as well. These guys come with 100 thorax, so even an unarmoured one will take 3 direct hits from M855A1 to bring them down, versus 2 for CBJ. There are some interesting breakpoints that this new ammo hits, which make a big difference against various types of common armour, which will look at in a second, but before we do, let's investigate the situation with penetration. CVJ has one less pen than M855A1, with 43 instead of 44. Is this important? I would argue a firm no, at least not as much as the damage difference does. At these levels, you're practically auto-penetrating class 4 armors anyway, with the probability for either round to go through at 94% after rounding, so the change is really very minor. Against class 5, because we're not at the penetration values where the pen chances start to change rapidly, again 43 to 44 doesn't actually do that much. We're looking at 24% pen chance with CBJ versus 30% with M855A1 on the first hit against a class 5. Neither are that likely, so we're relying on multiple shots to take players down wearing this kind of kit in both scenarios. Also, because of this, the armour damage actually ends up being important in some cases, and CBJ's slightly higher value of 57% means that it destroys armour slightly faster than 55A1, despite its pen value being slightly lower. So drilling down a bit more closely into what this practically means at different armour classes, for class 3 and below, having a pen of over 40 means that both bullets deal their full damage and it's as if the target wasn't wearing any armour at all. This is a two shot thorax kill on PMCs at any sensible range. Class 4 though is where things start to get interesting. I've talked previously in many videos about how armour with a similar rating to a bullet's pen value actually reduces the incoming damage even if a round manages to make it through by rolling a pen on the target. In this case, class 4 times 10, which is 40, is roughly in the same range as our CBJ and M855A1's pen values of 43 and 44, so we can expect some damage mitigation to occur here even when the bullets get through. What's fascinating about this is that you can expect around 15% of damage to be reduced for both, even though they pretty much pen class 4 armors on every shot. This takes M855A1 down to about 42 damage, and despite the fact that the armour will be slightly broken for shot 2, it's not enough to stop the mitigation effect. This means that while class 4 looks useless against 55A1, it does in fact stop you getting 2 taps. So this is one of the breakpoints that I referred to before. CBJ on the other hand will easily 2 shot class 4s to the chest, because even after the damage reduction, it hits for about 48, which leaves plenty of room for other things such as over distance. Damage fall off, another mechanic that can make players feel spongy at range when not using full powered cartridges, can often take rounds below their normal kill thresholds by sending the damage too low too quickly. But this only happens much further away with CBJ in this situation, against class 4 at least, as we have plenty of damage to spare. Moving on to class 5, the performance of the two bullets is actually very similar. On the first shot, the damage reduction for a penetration is around 30% for both, and remember we were only getting a pen every third or fourth bullet in the first place. This stops either of them from two hitting any class 5 armour, and intriguingly the entry level current with the worst durability of the category has a fractionally better survival chance against CPJ than M855A1. This is because the durability is really low and the slightly reduced initial pen chance of CPJ ends up making a difference, albeit a very small one. 
one. But for the mid-tier armors, CBJ wins overall because it 3 hits much more consistently. It's not a guarantee, but versus the Gazelle for example, it has a 50% probability to take an opponent down on the third hit versus only 14% for 55A1, which is odds that I like. One other random data point for class 5 is the Tegira face shield. This is probably the most accessible class 5 head protection now that the Altin and the Reese T are fined in raid only, as you can at least try to target farm Tegira on factory to get some. A similar logic for breakpoints applies here, but the thresholds are different. Even with a 30% damage reduction, CBJ goes from 58 damage to 40, which is still enough to snag a headshot on a PMC. This only happens 1 in 4 times still, but as you might imagine at this stage, M855A1 just ends up dipping below 35, which prevents it from one-shotting a class 5 helmet ever, even if you get the lucky 30% pen. As situational as these examples are, it all adds up to show the improved performance of CBJ over what is typically thought of as the staple PvP mid-game 556 cartridge. Now, I don't want this video to be an extensive modding guide for the MCX itself, but one of the issues that people have with it is the overall cost of the weapon. It suffers from a lack of parts, which means that really good builds are very expensive, but if you want to try it out relatively cheaply, there is a way to do it at level 3 traders. Firstly, you'll want to grab an MCX from the flea market. As long as these are under about 90k, it should be cheaper than building it completely from scratch. Just make sure you watch the durabilities as players sell these found on rogues and raiders as well. I tried to buy mine at 100% for around 70k. Then, the most expensive part is the suppressor. MCXs usually come with the T-lock and the two-port brake muzzle adapters already, but the SRD QD on the flea is typically 60,000 rubles or more. At Skier 3 though, you get access to a barter for a raven statue, which can bring the cost of this down to 30k. Applying this, there are a series of unusual foregrips that don't fit to most weapons. The Sig Sauer Vertical is really cheap and it gives minus 2% recoil reduction. It's not the best foregrip ever, but it is certainly budget friendly and requires no rail adapters. Then for stocks, the most cost efficient is using the standard adapter with the Bascac stock on the end. At 6k for this one, the whole stock setup comes to under 10k, which is a bargain and gives slightly better recoil control than most of the other combinations, at the expense of some ergo. Finally, I tend to use the MOE AR-15 pistol grip to bring up the ergonomics a bit more, but you could use one of the hoe grips instead with 9 ergo if you don't really care about the extra 1 from the MOE which gives you 10. This comes to 43 ergo and 43 recoil. Not meta, but certainly usable. The mods cost us 21k, plus the suppressor barter which is about 31, so 52 in total, and the gun that I featured was listed at 65,000 rubles. If you built it with this, that's 117k all in, and I would argue this is an extremely reasonable starting point. If you want some more ergo and are willing to spend a little bit more, you can replace the stock section with an ATP tube and a Chris Defiance stock. The advanced tube and the MOE plus butt pad would be the meta choice, but at level 3 traders you likely don't have access to these. You can also swap over to the RVG foregrip for 2 more ergo, which brings us to 52 ergonomics and 44 recoil instead, gaining 9 ergo for the expense of 1 recoil, which can make the weapon feel a bit more responsive to ADS. This is even more relevant if you opt for the 40 rounders, which are not a bad choice. At 3x1, you'll need to use at least a CSA rig to fit them into, but the extra 10 bullets can feel really clutch at 800 RPM fire rate, with the disadvantage of minus 4 ergo compared to the regular Stanag Max. I've had an interesting time with the MCX so far. With 800 RPM, the time to kill is extremely quick using CBJ if you're in a fair fight where you're both shooting at each other, but the initial jump is a bit rough. This is much like the mid-tier M4s, where you just have to get used to it, and the MCX has a really bad stigma of having terrible horizontal recoil, but after all the reworks they did, it's actually the same as the M4 these days. If you're prepared for a decent chunk of barrel rise, practice with it a bit and get used to it, it can be pretty good. As usual, I do think it will get outclassed in the end game by weapons that scale better with level 4 attachments and superior ammunition, but in the mid game, like we're in now, it is a decent pickup if you're looking for some variety. So next, let's take a look at a few clips to see how it performed in raid. Is that player? Kinda looked like one. Bye, yeah. please. Well, I guess given that a scav came through there, there's no one else. We could just assume that. So let's move down. Yeah. Definitely a PMC. 100%. And this is an AK. That's for, sorry, HK. This one, <gasps> oh, but I don't have the. I'm not sure. Yeah, they've only just put it in the game. I go along Klimov rather than through post office. Yeah, we could go along the outside of the street. Right. Oh, 
Oh no, not the Shluigiri over there. Right, now we need to be careful because I think there's snipers around on the roof sometimes. Right, here we go. Here, running. I want to go this way. Someone up there. This is freaking scary. One in front of the locked door, one inside the chain door. Loot first. No, no, no. I want to get the quest done, dude. Loot can wait. Loot is loot's just rubles. I need that XP. I need that XP. I'm glad I brought a flashlight. Oh, what's that there? Is that anything? I mean, this seems pretty lackluster to me, guys. I haven't tried the Meta MCXs. That's right, the, the M4s yet. And we might try some Meta M4s. They've got these new parts to them which make them really good this wipe. There's like, you give up like tiny bits of recoil, but it doesn't matter because the M2, M4 gets down to like 23 recoil or something stupid. So you give up a bit of recoil to go to like 26 instead. But the Ergo is like 20 higher, 30 higher. So you can go like suppressed and with the drum and still be in like, you know. There's another. We're going to try and get a little weird flank on. Let me up. Come on. Not someone, is it? we could try and go all the way around. I don't, I don't really want to go down there because I'm sort of giving them... The ability to... Ah, I know what we're going to do. We go this way. Let's go this way. So we're go... I didn't want to give them the ability to just like... Oh no, not one on Suka. God damn it. Freaking the scabs over there. Oh, there's a scab there. He's about to pop out of here. This guy could be down here, I suppose. Unlikely, but... Ah! Oh, gosh. That initial recoil kick is... Is 
Is that a scav? It probably is. I guess he's dead. That scab looked different to the other scab, though. Ah! He isn't dead. Who's this one? What on earth is going on? Actually, a player there. He's trying to do something really cheeky, I think. Hmm. I'm unsure about this. Let's go back a little. I'm feeling a bit like worried. <laughs> I tend not to run the same gun like over and over. So I often end up like not having enough ammo for all of them. Like, if you're just running the same gun over and over and over and over again, you could probably just use CBJ. But yeah, if you lose, like, three mags every raid of CBJ, because you, like, die three times in a row, that's, that's all of it gone. Unless you're really stockpiling. And then you have to, like, stockpile everything. You have to stockpile 556. You have to stockpile, like, MP7 ammo, blah, blah, blah. Like, I normally like to stack. And it's cheaper, too. Mm, that's over that side. Maybe we're better off going the other way. I don't know. Did he die? I think he died. That's him, right? Sometimes I feel like you're probably better off just uh, tapping it rather than going full auto, unless you've got like a really big mag. Yeah, the thing about this guy, it's just like, it's very, uh, it's very close range orientated. Like it's very good up close. <laughs> But it really, it really struggles at range. A bit like the, a little bit like the M4, honestly. I just level body part to heal. You have to have, um, you have to have your heal keys on release. So when you hold them down, you then use the scroll wheel. If you don't use the scroll wheel, it won't work. We're we just gonna suddenly die here. Not sure. Let's see. What does he have? Only for UN. He's got one of these. Had it on semi. Oh, the classic. That's a, a an absolute classic. I man. We're loud, boys. Oh, the dude is literally extracting, I think. Is that a scavex, Phil? I, feel, I think it is. Poor guy. I kind of feel... I almost feel sorry for him. I didn't even realise. I thought he'd, like, laid down to try to uh, fight me. Extract Cavano. There's the scavex, Phil. I can't even remember where the scav ones are on customs. I actually was like, oh no! I feel really hard. I'm really sad for him now. <gasps> Poor guy's probably sat in the stash just seething, sees my name gonna come and dislike all my vids thumbs down every video it's that there's gonna be some kind of montage you know be like the the protagonist that knows nothing of it and you've accidentally sparked some evil bad guy who was just you know unfairly wronged in their teens or something like that so next up, if you're still looking for more ideas of what level 3 trader weapons to use, go and check out my rundown video here. Otherwise, as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons and have fun in your raids.